drinks in a blink Oh yeah Grab yourself a hot drink Cause you're watching how to train your Gavin Yep, that's me Hey guys, welcome back to How to Train Your Gavin. Today I am doing my August book haul and there are 26 books on here. This is not including audiobooks or books that I got from NetGalley or anything like that. These are just the physical books. I'm wondering if you would like to see what I get on audio book format and any of the NetGalley proofs that I've gotten. You might be interested, I don't know, but these are the physical books. Anyway, let me know in the comments if you would like to see that kind of stuff in the next book haul maybe. So out of those 26 books, I've only bought 15 of them. <laughs> so I did get a few sent to me from publishers. I got, I got a couple of ARCs. Some of these are finished books that publishers have sent me. So I will get straight into it as I usually do. I start with the free books. And I go middle grade, young adult, adult. And then I go into the books that I paid for. Middle grade, young adult, and then adult. And I hope your adventure through Wonderland is going well. I am drinking from my Touch of Whimsy mug there. With me is the White Rabbit. I just, I keep bringing this out because I love it so much. Let's get into doing the books. So from the free books, one of the first books I got was Dark Whispers by Vashti Hardy. Vashti herself sent me this book. She wanted to send me a signed copy to say thank you for the support that I showed her during Believeathon 2. I'll tell you what the inscription inside it says. Um, to Gavin, aka Captain Hetherington. Keep dreaming big and being wonderful you. I'm forever honoured to have you on the crew. <laughs> rhymed, I actually didn't realise it rhymed until now. Thank you for your super book support. Biggest hugs to you, Vashti Hardy. Ah, oh, this is going in my treasured collection. I am so happy to... I uh, have a signed, personalised copy. I did actually buy signed copies from an independent bookshop way back in February, I think it was. But then I ended up giving those copies away because they weren't dedicated. But that's absolutely fine because I knew I would be meeting Vashti at the end of March at a book festival that I had, you know, gotten tickets for and stuff. And then that book festival got cancelled, so I never got to meet Vashti. So I never managed to get my book signed, but Vashti did send me this one, so I am eternally grateful and then the next time I do meet Vashti at a book festival hopefully then I can get the other one signed as well because oh I can't wait to meet her she's just incredible. Uh, this is the sequel to Brightstorm and Brightstorm followed twins Arthur and Morty. They get told that their father died in an airship crash in South Polaris and he was an explorer so the twins end up going after him to find out the truth about what happened and it's such a great adventure story. I love Dark Whispers. I think it might be better than the first one. I think it is. I think my co-pile rating rated it higher so definitely check out, well there's Bright Soul there, definitely check out these books uh, if you want really fun adventures. Bloomsbury kindly sent me Tinsel by Chabelle Pounder and it also has a subtitle The Girls Who Invented Christmas and oh, I can't wait for this. This is a middle grade Christmas Christmassy novel. Like, look at the chapter headings. That is just gorgeous. Like, it's making me so excited for Christmas. So, what if somewhere along the way we've all got the Santa story a bit wrong? Join Blanche Close and her best friend Rinky for a fun, festive sleigh ride you'll never forget. So, I think this is talking about maybe the women who were behind Christmas that never get told in the original stories and things. So, it's a bit of like a Christmas retelling. Can't wait to read it. This comes out on the 29th of October. Do pre-order it. Do check it out. I'm gonna get my hands on a fi finished product because it's gonna be in hardback and it should look really pretty. And this has already got, you know, the kind of a, li a little embossed and glittery on the title there as well. And I just know that the finished product is gonna look just even more gorgeous. So thank you so much Bloomsbury for sending me this book. It's gonna get me in the Christmas spirit. In my Alcray Junior box, I got The Time of Green Magic by Hilary McKay. All I really know about this one is that uh, two families merge together. I think the main character's dad marries the like somebody else's mum and the son of the mum and the daughter of the father kind of move in together in this really strange house and strange things happen I think. There is this really big kind of cat-like creature on the cover there which honestly I'm so intrigued by it with this cover. I wasn't the biggest fan of the UK cover. This is the American cover and I absolutely love it. So it also quite shortish. Oh, I need to read this as well. A huge thank you to Scholastic for sending me Life of Riley, Beginner's Look by Simon James Green, illustrated by Alexi Biskoff. This is Simon James Green's middle grade debut. He does write YA fiction, more specifically LGBTQ plus fiction, and this is his first foray into middle grade. And I believe this follows Riley, who is 
first with a really bad look and then he meets somebody with really good look and I guess it's kind of like the misadventures that happens between them. It, it sounds like, you know, Just My Look, the film starring Lindsay Lohan, which I absolutely love. It sounds a little bit like that, but for middle grade. So I'm really excited to read this to see if that is actually what happens <laughs> and like that's the way it turns out. But I can't wait to read it. Thank you so much for sending me this, Scholastic. Scholastic also sent me The Accidental Wizard by Kimberly Pauly and illustrated by Jason Cockcroft. This one has just come out and it is about Twig, who is the last surviving apprentice of the great wizard, Ripplements, which is just as terrifying as it sounds. All Ripplements always meant well, but for a wizard of such high regard, he really does make an awful lot of mistakes. And then who's always there to clear them up? That's right, Twig. So when Ripplements' most powerful spell is let loose on the world, off Twig goes to catch it. And catch it he does, except not quite in the way that he intended. Because instead of catching it in an enchanted jaw, Twig sort of, well, catches it in himself and that's only the beginning of his troubles sounds so good i love things with like that's just chock full of magic and wonder and this is what this one promises and i don't know why but i'm feeling like onward like kind of pixels onward vibes i don't know why i'm probably making that up but thank you so much scholastic i believe kimberly Pauly is a debut author so definitely show her all of the love nosy crow sent me the thing at black hole lake by dash roberts and this is the second book in the sticky pine series i don't know if all of the books are all separate because i don't have the first book but this is like a sci-fi middle grade and this one is about Milo who finds something lurking in Black Hole Lake. Something big. It's a monstrous discovery that would make his ex-friend Lucy Sladen's mind explode if he was still speaking to her, which he isn't. But Lucy is following her own clothes and closing in on an even greater secret. It sounds a little bit like a Loch Ness Monster kind of deal with it, I guess. And apparently it's sci-fi. I'm really trying my best to find middle grade sci-fis that are just going to blow me away. This one seems really good and I like the whole Sticky Pines where things get weird kind of series vibe of it. Sounds like this place where lots of strange and mysterious sci-fi kind of things happen. So i very appreciative of this one. I'm going to get the first one and read the series because I do need more middle grade sci-fi in my life. Nosy Crow were also kind enough to send me My Life as a Cat by Carly Sorosiak. This is a proof copy and it comes out. In fact, it's out now. This one follows Leonard. Yeah, Leonard. This one follows Leonard, who is a cat, but he is an alien cat. He was sent to Earth, but he thought he would come as a human. Turns out he comes as a cat. I've heard some E.T kind of comparisons and Carly Sorosiak also wrote I Cosmo which is what I read last year it was very charming and I think this one I mean this is more up my alley because I'm more of a cat person anyway and it sounds a little sci-fi-esque actually especially since you know, this is an alien cat. But yeah, looking forward to reading it. Thank you so much, Nosy Crow, for sending it my way. One of my absolutely most anticipated reads, which I have actually finished reading, and it will be my September wrap-up, but oh, I've been, I was so excited for this book. I was so excited for this book. I was chasing so many people to get a hold of this proof. Anyway, thank you so much, Hachette, for sending to me Holopox, The Hunt for Morrigan Crow by Jessica Townsend. This is, well, this was on my September TBR. I have finished reading it. I'm not going to say anything about it. I do have a review on Goodreads if you want to check that out. But I have been so excited. This is the third book in the Nevermore series. It got pushed back twice and it finally comes out in the middle of October. So do pre-order it, do check it out. I, yes, I chased a lot of people up for this arc and, oh, Honestly, I'm so happy to have it in my collection. It's it's beautiful. I love the green. It's very big. So yes, the Nevermore series. It is one of the most popular middle grade books on Booktube. And yet Nevermore, it follows Morrigan Craw, who is a cursed child. She is whisked away to the land of Nevermore by Jupiter North to save her life. But she does have to prove herself and show that she should be part of this wondrous society. This is the third book. And in this one, there is a strange illness that's spreading throughout Nevermore, but only in the animals and the animals, and it makes them a bit savage. So it's up to Morrigan to find out what's going on. Yeah, that's all I'm gonna say about it. So <laughs> this one comes out October 15th to pre-order it. And thank you, thank you, thank you so much to the people at Hachette, at Five Get Bookish, for sending me this arc. Honestly, I am so sorry I'm so annoying, but you know, I really needed this book. So thank you so much for sending it. The lovely people at Harper Collins sent me Nick and Charlie by Alice Osman. Well, actually I bought it because I didn't know they were sending me a copy of it. I bought it so I could get the limited signed edition one. And then they ended up sending me one anyway. So I ended up giving away my free one to a friend so I could keep the signed edition. I love me a good signed edition. But I mean, thank you so much Harper Collins for sending me the book. This is 
Obviously, the Nick and Charlie from the Heartstopper series by Alice Osman. The Heartstopper series is told as a graphic novel. This one is a novella, but I'm not too sure what it's about. I think it's just, oh, it's them kind of having to be separated. So Nick is leaving for university and Charlie will be left behind at sixth form. So it's kind of goes, probably goes through their struggles as maybe what can they do as a long-term distance relationship? Will it work for them? Will it not? Who knows? So I'm excited to read it, especially since it's so short and I love Nick and Charlie so much. So thank you so much HarperCollins for sending me a copy of this book. The next two books I have Illumicrate unboxings for, but one of them is Seven Devils by Elizabeth May and Laura Lamb. This is a sci-fi and there is the Purple Sprayed Edges. I will leave a link for the unboxing down in the description box. And also the A Darker Shade of Magic Illumicrate Special Edition that was in the big A Darker Shade of Magic box. I also have an unboxing for, so do check that out. There were so many incredible items in that box, but this is the gorgeous version of it. It had a dust jacket that I put on myself, and it also has these gorgeous silver sprayed edges, and uh, love it. So those are all of the free books. I'll get into the books that I paid for. One of the first ones of the month was Return to Raw by Jenny McLachlan. This is a sequel to The Land of Raw, and it follows two twins who thought they conjured up a world called Raw in their imaginations when they were kids, but when their grandfather is kidnapped by a scarecrow and taken through a folding mattress into The Land of Raw, they realize that their imaginary world is more real than they thought, so I really enjoyed the first one. It was so whimsical and very Peter Pan-esque. And I can't wait to read the second one. This also has like a fold-out cover with, you know, illustrations by Ben Mantle. And honestly, I just, I really like the world that's been set up in this book. It's just, oh, it's just so magical. So I'm really excited to read this one. I love how it matches the first one with the cover as well. So that's the two of them together on the side. Honestly, I stan, I stan books that really do match, especially in a series. Like, honestly, that just makes my heart so happy. So, yeah, return to Rome. A book that I have showed off countless times, especially on my Believeathon Instagram account, which I'll link in the description. Go follow it if you haven't already. And I also put this on my TBR. I put it in a recommendations video. You've seen a lot of this book. But that is Kiki's Delivery Service by Iko Kodono. And I literally just finished reading this like an hour ago. And I'll let you know my thoughts on it in a later video. But honestly, this is such a charming, beautiful cover illustrated by Joe Todd Stanton. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. And I love the Studio Ghibli movie as well. So it does follow Kiki who moves to a new town because that is like a coming of age thing for a witch. And her sort of ability as a witch is to be able to fly. So she has a broomstick. She goes around this new town delivering things. Just the cover alone made me want to buy it. But this is the new edition that's been released that was released by Puffin. So if you want this edition, it is a Puffin edition. So, beautiful cover. Then because I really was inspired by the Kiki's Delivery Service vibes, I ended up getting either Evergreen Semi-Magical Witch by Julie Abe, and all I know about this really is that it follows a young girl called Eva who has to prove herself as a witch, otherwise she will lose her powers forever. So I think that's pretty right, yep. Yeah. Uh, she needs to earn the rank of Novice Witch before her 13th birthday. And she ends up going to a different town, which is pretty much like Kiki's Delivery Service, and uh, the residents expect a powerful witch, not a semi-magical girl. So she has to prove herself worthy to this new town. And it does say at the end there as well, it's perfect for fans of Kiki's Delivery Service and Arusha and the End of Time. So, and I love at the top as well, sometimes all you need is a pinch of magic, which, you know, makes reminds me of uh, Michelle Harrison's Pinch of Magic. So honestly, I think this is going to be so cute. I did really want to read this for the Touch of Whimsy Readathon, but unfortunately I lost. This is chapter one, The Enchanted Bookshop. Those chapter headings also make me want to read it right now. There isn't really anything under the dust jacket. It's just normal. <laughs> I'm trying to finish my collection of Murder Most and Ladylike books, so I ended up getting Death in the Spotlight by Robin Stevens, which is the seventh book in the series. Yeah, seventh. And also The Case of the Missing Treasure by Robin Stevens. This is just a short story, like a novella. Uh, this one is a full full-on book. The middle of Sunday Daylight Books does follow up Daisy and Hazel. They make their own detective agency at school. It's set in the 1920s. So I look forward to reading the rest of the series. I've only read the first one so far. I've heard good things about the, the rest of the series. So I think I only need Cream Buns and Crime. And I think that's the last. Oh no, I also need a spoonful of murder. I need two more books and then I finish my the murder most needed like series. So not really much to say about these ones. Then I got Vampirates by Justin Sumper. This one is the first book called Demons of the Ocean. I think this is a six book series. It's actually a little bit of an order series. I think these have been re-released with these covers. 
or maybe a 10th anniversary or something like that, I'm not sure, but signed by the author, so I had to pick it up. Also, Pirates, but Vampirates, that sounds really cool, and I really wanted the Pirates of the Caribbean vibes, and just the cover alone just makes me think that. So the year is 2,512, the oceans have risen, a new dawn of piracy has begun, and then twins Grace and Connor Tempest hastily depart the suffocating small town of Crescent Moon Bay in their dad's old sailing boat and they're caught in a vicious storm, shipwrecked and separated. Adventure on the high seas, Pirates of the Caribbean. It sounds like it could be a great follow-up to The Ship of Shadows, which I read and loved, and I want more books like that. So this could be a really good one as well. But I think this is a little bit older, so if you've read this one, do let me know. And uh, yeah, hard to get it because it's signed. <laughs> I also really wanted to finish my Guardian series, so the only book I needed left of that one was book two, which was A. Aster Buddymund and the Warrior Eggs at the Earth's Core by William Joyce. This one is the base of the Rise of the Guardians movie by... Was it DreamWorks that made Rise of the Guardians? I can't remember. But it is that movie, Rise of the Guardians. There were four books released before that came out as a sort of basis. And then the fifth book, which was Drac Frost, came out a few years later. So this is book two, it was the only book I needed uh, to finish the series, but it is like the Guardians of, you know, like Christmas and Easter and the Tooth Fairy and things like that, you know, the really mystical kind of things. I don't know how to explain them, <laughs> but you know, those kind of things. So yeah, second book, finish the collection. A book that came out a couple of months ago that I was really eager to get my hands on was Curse of the Night Witch, the first book in the Emblem Island series by Alex Aster. Aster? Alex Astor. And uh, yeah, first book, Emblem Island. I just, ugh, Night Witch, Curse of the Night Witch. I just love books with witches or with like, witches in the title. It's just, ah, oh, love it. So I had to get this. So this follows Tor, who wakes up to discover a new marker on his skin, the symbol of a curse that has shortened his lifeline, giving him a week before an untimely death. Oh my God. There's only one way to break the curse and it requires a trip to the notorious Night Witch. So with just his villagers terrifying ancient stories as a guide and his two friends Engel and Melda by his side, Tor must travel across the unpredictable Emlyn Island filled with wicked creatures he only knows through myths and a race against his dwindling lifeline. Ooh, and it's like the start of a series. I honestly can't wait to read it. I also got Paolo Santiago and the River of Tears by Telake Mejia. And this one is in my September TBR, but I pronounced Paolo wrong. It is pronounced Paolo. This one follows Paolo. <laughs> I just say the name over and over again now. And there is this mythical river. And this river is kind of haunted by La Girona. And I think that's also how you pronounce it. Sorry, I was pronouncing things so terribly in my September TBR but I was corrected, it should be La Girona. And she is the ghost woman who drags kids into the river with her. I don't know how this tale, like, depicts her. There are loads of different variations of that, you know, folk tale, like, throughout uh, so many different kind of media and films and TV. So I think this is pretty much the same, where she drags kids' souls into the river with her. So this is a Rick Ryden Presents book as well, so it has the folk tale and I think some Mexican folk tales weaved in. So I am reading it in September so I will have read this by the time I do my wrap up hopefully and I can't wait to read it, I really can't. Also freshly just come out but I did manage to pick it up a few days early because it had come into bookshops early and that is Kidnap on the California Comet by M.G. Leonard and Sam Sedgman illustrated by Eliza Paganelli and this is the second book in the Adventures on Train series. It is a mystery series that each book is going to be set on a different kind of train and it sounds it, it doesn't sound like anything else I've come across and it sounds a little bizarre but at the same time I really enjoyed the first book Highland Falcon Thief really enjoyed it this is the follow-up it's set on the California Comet there is a kidnapping so the third book is actually about a murder so it's murder on the safari something and I had to pick up a signed copy as well of course but each of the crimes seemed to get more and more dangerous so in the first book it was just a robbery in this book it's a kidnapping and then the next book there's a murder but I can't wait I cannot wait to read this I've been dying to get my hands on it love the cover I love how it matches the first book and this one's a beautiful blue so yep Kidnap on the California Comet. Make sure you pick this one up. It is brand new. It's in bookshops now. Finally, for middle grade, I picked up the Puffin Book of Big Dreams. Stories to spark your imagination. This is filled to the brim with short stories and poems and so much more by a lot of middle grade authors. So even on the cover here, it is Michael Rosen, Jamie Littler, 
Mary Blackman, Jacqueline Wilson, Jeff Kinney, Roald Dahl, and many more. I mean, there are a lot of authors I recognize on here. It's got Anne Frank in here as well, actually. Beatrix Potter. I think it's probably, you know, the authors who are dead. I think it's just stories that they've told before, but maybe just uh, a short story placed in here, maybe. We have Maria Kuznia from The Ship of Shadows in here as well. Michael Morpurgo. We have Robin Stevens from Metamorphs and Ladylike. We have Shua Murray who wrote Orphans of the Tide. Tamsin Merchant. Tom Fletcher, there's so many great authors in here, so I'm really excited to dive into more of these short stories and I like, really fall in love with them. I've read the Frost Hall one, loved it. And also, check under the dust jacket. Look at that. If you can see it nice. Yeah. <laughs> that is absolutely stunning. So, oh, please pick it up. It just, oh, it's so magical and wonderful. I only have one YA book that I bought and that is Midnight Sun by Stephanie Meyer. If you don't like this cover, do skip ahead or I might just cover it up like this. Uh, Midnight Sun. So this is just Twilight told from Edward's perspective. I haven't finished the Twilight series and I really picked this up because it was half price and I kind of just wanted the copy of it so I could say that I had it, which sounds so bad. I do want to read this at some point, but just not anytime soon, uh, but at least I have it now so I can say that. But yeah, not really much more else to say about this one really. It is just Twilight, but Edward's point of view. I think it was leaked online like 10 years ago or something and Stephanie Meyer refused to release it until this year when we also got another Hunger Games book. So we have a lot of YA nostalgia this year and it could end up being really good. I don't know. I need to read these things to find out for myself. So yeah, I got Midnight Sun. It's the only YA book that I really bought. So the last three books are adult books. I got two absolutely gorgeous puffin cloth bound editions that have just come out. I have been collecting these editions. I've shown them off before, but it's the puffin cloth bound, which included Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. This has just come out with this really beautiful cover. I love the feel of these covers as well. Honestly, I have the whole collection so far. So that is just absolutely stunning. And on the back there, it's got like the sort of brain kind of look to it. And uh, the quote, now that I had finished, the beauty of the dream vanished and breathless horror and disgust filled my heart. Oh, I can't wait to reread this. Also, what came out is Wuthering Heights by Emily Bronte. Again, another absolutely stunning cover side there and on the back it has she was a wild wicked slip of a girl she burned too bright for this world oh i love these editions so so much and they're only bringing out a couple the little prince was supposed to come out at the same time as well but that got pushed back to next september heartbroken but honestly every single edition that comes out with these covers with this style i'm gonna get I'm going to grab the other ones to show you. So I got all of these ones last year so we can see what they all look like together. And yeah, like honestly, these are the prettiest editions I have ever seen in my entire life. We have The Wizard of Oz, The Secret Garden, Christmas Carol, Black Beauty, Treasure Island, Dracula, Frankenstein and Wuthering Heights. So, oh, 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 oh I don't want to drop these and damage them. These are like precious to me now, but oh. Honestly, I just love these editions so much. I shouldn't be this superficial, but when they're this sexy, you just can't help yourself. So, mm, I love them. And then finally, I picked up The Green Mile by Stephen King. And I picked this one up mainly because I hadn't seen this cover before. It had an absolutely disgusting cover in the UK for the longest time. I don't know when this cover came out. It just randomly came into the store one day and I thought, that's a much better cover than the absolutely god-awful one that was on before. I would never have bought The Green Mile with that cover, ever. I literally said this to myself. This is a promise I made to myself. I'm never buying The Green Mile with that disgusting cover. So this came into the store and I was like, <laughs> and I ended up getting it. It was, it's one of the last few Stephen King books that I really needed from his like classic collection. Like this is like, held in such high esteem with a lot of his classic books. I think this came out in the 90s, so it might come out earlier. I have seen the movie, but I saw the movie like 20 years ago. So it's been a while. It's set in 1932. The newest resident on death row is John Coffey, a giant of a black man convicted of the brutal murder of two little girls. But nothing is as it seems with John Coffey and around him unfolds a bizarre and horrifying story. It's most likely gonna be rather impactful. So those are all of the books that I hold in August. I hope I provided you with some sort of entertainment and maybe some good recommendations for what you can buy, anything that's brand new that you haven't seen yet and now you have your eye on. But yeah, that is the video. Please leave a like if you enjoyed and subscribe if you haven't already. Let me know in the comments if you have read any of these, if you love them, what ones you're tempted to buy. And I will see you in the next video.
Bye. I really need to dust this room. I really do.